Please be seated. On behalf of the Board of Trustees of Central European University and as Pro-Rector for Teaching and Learning at the University, it is my privilege to convene the 32nd commencement of Central European University. Today, as ever, we celebrate both an end and a beginning. In this academic year, 563 students are graduating with masters and doctoral degrees, and 20 students are receiving non-degree certificates. This morning, we awarded degrees to the first 13 students to graduate from the CU's undergraduate programs, which we started in 2020. Each of our students represents a story of commitment perseverance, dedication, and achievement. I would like to extend a special welcome to the representatives of the Afghan women and girls who will be receiving the 2023 Open Society Prize. We are also honored by the presence of our Board of Trustees and many distinguished guests. I would like to give a warm welcome to the new Chair of our Board of Trustees, Geoffrey Smith. A warm welcome also to our honoured guests, supporters and partners from Vienna, Austria and from around the world. I would like to especially welcome Her Excellency Ambassador Manitza Bakhtari, Ambassador of Afghanistan, His Excellency Aftab Ahmed Kokher, Ambassador of Pakistan, His Excellency Gilles Pecou, Ambassador of France to Austria, His Excellency Ambassador Emile Briggs, Director of the Diplomatic Academy here in Vienna, and Her Excellency Ambassador Franziska Honsowitz Friesnig, representing the Austrian Ministry of Foreign Affairs. I would also like to welcome the faculty and staff of Central European University whose dedicated work throughout the past academic year has made this day possible. Finally, the warmest welcome to the families and friends of today's graduating students. We thank them 
for their contribution to our students' success. You all deserve to be very proud. Before we begin the program, I want to take a moment to remember members of our community whom we have lost in the past year. Donald Blinken, the former US ambassador to Hungary and one of our distinguished former trustees, died in September 2022. As well as his contribution as a trustee, Donald and his wife Vera gave a substantial donation to the Open Society Archives in Budapest, now named after them both. The Oxford philosopher Bill Newton Smith died in April 2023. Bill was the chair of the executive committee of CEU, the predecessor of this board, which laid down the foundations of the university in the early 1990s. He then served as a CEU trustee between 1995 and 2016. Josef Yashab, former senator in the Czech Parliament and the second rector of CU from 1997 to 1999, died in May 2023. From our former CU faculty, we lost in the last year Gaspar Miklos Tomás, visiting professor at the Nationalism Studies, Gender Studies, Sociology and Anthropology Departments, Yulia Salai, professor in Nationalism Studies, Political Science, Romani Studies, and Andras Gerő, professor and founding member of CU Department of History. We honor their memory. I now invite the president and rector, Shalini Randeria, to give her graduation address. Please welcome Dr. Shalini Randeria. Dear students, colleagues, parents, families, and of course the graduating class of 2023, dear members of our board and distinguished guests, a very warm welcome to all of you. It literally is a warm welcome. So I hope this is going to be a really memorable occasion for all of you who are gathered here to receive your diplomas. Every Jude, as you know, we gather to celebrate your accomplishments, the accomplishments of our fresh graduates who have completed their academic journeys with the university. This day marks the symbolic end of these journeys, but I'd like to remind everyone each year it also marks a new beginning. All of you graduating today have reached an important milestone with your freshly minted master's or doctoral degrees. My heartiest congratulations on this achievement. You now join an ever-growing community of proud and loyal CEU alumni, a large family you can rightly call your own. Enriched by the unique experience of your years at the university, you will no doubt continue to enrich this larger CEU family worldwide. Maintain your ties to us, to your alma mater, but equally importantly, also your ties of friendship and of solidarity with one another. Moreover, the spirit of CEU will continue to guide you in your various pursuits, academic or otherwise, to contribute to your societies and communities and improve the lives of those around you. As most of you know too well by now, CEU is not just a place of academic excellence and disciplined hard work, although you've put in both of those. It's above all also an ethos an unflinching ethical commitment to the values of an open, tolerant society that all of us hold dear. The very fact that you're receiving your diplomas today is testimony to your conviction that the world can be made a better place and that you will do everything in your power to bring this about. So it marks for you a new beginning in this sense as well. Having the hard work of the last years behind you and having fulfilled all the rigorous formal requirements for earning your degrees, you have every right to be proud of yourselves, feel exhilarated at this moment, and it's a day of joyous celebration. And yet, even on this day, it would be remiss of me not to remind you that there is little that we have to be complacent about the state of the world today. The pandemic, which loomed so large for two years and also overshadowed your lives, may have receded from immediate visibility to some extent, 
but the lessons of that planetary disruption may have been too hastily forgotten. Many of its far-reaching systemic fallouts, from societal polarization to inflation-induced accelerating inequalities, are unfortunately here to stay with us. A present age of what some might have called, or some do call, polycrises has generated formidable anxieties. And there is still far too little political will to fight, for example, climate change, with its highly uneven effects among the poor and the marginalized of this world. Many of the most basic rights of women and minorities, which we had long thought were irreversible historical achievements, have once again come under attack in societies all over the world today. And universities themselves, the spaces, the ideals of free inquiry and pursuit of knowledge, have once again become the targets of political onslaught. For more than a year now, Russia's brutal war of aggression in Ukraine has claimed tens of thousands of innocent lives, resulting also in the forced displacement of millions. As you can see in the harrowing exhibition, Unissued Diplomas, just launched in the hallways of our own campus, this war has claimed the lives of young Ukrainian students too, shattering their dreams and their aspirations. Their ghostly presence upon our walls serves as an all too painful reminder of the fragility, the inherent fragility and vulnerability of our own privileges that we enjoy a semblance of stability in a world increasingly threatened by forces of resentment, forces that are intent on rolling back hard-won human rights and civil liberties. It is these illiberal forces with enormous resources spreading their influence that you must be prepared to stand up with the only weapon that you have at your disposal, that we all have at our disposal, the powers of reason, the power of persuasion, of critical evaluation, bolstered by a genuine spirit of justice, compassion, and solidarity. So as you prepare for the next stage of your professional lives, you must remember that you have gained so much more than just an education narrowly understood in terms of career skills and expertise in your years at the university. Perhaps at no other time in its history has the mission of the Central European University been so vital to the cause of democracy in our part of the world and beyond. This institution, your intellectual home for the last year or years, uncompromisingly stands for a core set of values the fundamental values of free and equitable open societies. As authoritarian threats to democracy, liberty, equality mount, these are the ideals that we hope you will carry with you into the world and also defend. Not only have your studies with us prepared you to excel in your chosen academic fields, but I'm confident that you have learned the lessons of practicing pluralism, tolerance, solidarity, compassion. It will be your responsibility to impart these lessons to others wherever you may choose to live and work. And I wish you all the very best in this endeavor for many years to come. I wish you, of course, all success in your personal lives, in your professional lives, which CEU has enriched and also transformed. Thank you so much for having chosen to study at the CEU, and please do keep in touch with us. Our doors remain open for you always. Let me conclude by offering heartfelt congratulations to all of you once again, all of those who graduate today, thanking you for all your hard work, your intellectual discipline, your creativity, as well as for the patience and perseverance you've demonstrated as worthy members of our community during these rather difficult times in the last years that you have been with us. You have all of us, each one of you, you have made CEU proud, and you will do us prouder from here on. I congratulate you once again and wish you all the very best. I would now like to invite Dr. Alexander Soros to present his remarks. Dr. Soros is the chair of the Open Society Foundations and a member of the CU Board of Trustees. Please welcome Dr. Soros.
Thank you, everyone. Uh, my father uh, really loved attending uh, CU graduations. Uh, it was always a high point uh, of his year, and it has become the same for me, so I'm glad to at least keep one family tradition uh, going. He also asked me uh, to send his warmest regards and congratulations to each of you on this special day. I am so... I'm so honored uh, to share this stage with the heroic Afghan women to whom the CU has a re awarded this prestigious uh, Open Society Prize this year. Um, uh, you all represent unparalleled courage, and uh, we stand with you. But I really want to talk to you, the class of 2023, because today is your day. And the past few years have been a time of immense struggle for all universities. The effects of the pandemic and lockdown haven't been easy on any institution, class, or student, and those impacts have been magnified for the only university in the history of the European Union to be expelled. But you guys made it through, and those disruptions are not easy. And we're now finally seeing the impacts on education, also from pre-K to postdocs, and each of you being here today is a testament to your ability to overcome adversity and succeed. Having said that, I think it's become unfortunately customary at graduation ceremonies now to hear talk about the, how difficult the world is and the, how difficult the world that awaits you is. To have speakers come and tell you how the world is full of war, climate crisis, pandemics, and the new threat of AI. They tell you that your generation must save the world or restore us to some nostalgic bygone time when somehow everything was great and we all got along, still looking for that time. There will always be crises in the world. There will always be the need for improvement. And while I know CEU has given you all the tools to equip you for the future, and while I know you will all save the world and solve climate change and end the wars and end poverty, I just ask you wait until at least you get your diplomas. Because today is not about those challenges. It is not about war or AI or poly crises. It is about you. And so congratulations. You all deserve it. Congratulations. I now invite the Chair of the CU Board of Trustees, Jeffrey Smith, to give his remarks. On behalf of the Board of Trustees of Central European University, welcome fellow trustees, CU administration, faculty, staff, families and friends, and of course, most importantly, the graduating class of 2023. Commencement speakers in the United States are well known for delivering little pithy aphorisms to send graduates off into the world. For example, Apple's founder, Steve Jobs, famously advised the Stanford graduating class to stay hungry, stay foolish. At my daughter's college graduation a few weeks ago, the head of the Environmental Defense Fund told the graduates, make deliberate choices, don't drift. And while these both seem like good pieces of advice, Unfortunately, I do not have any such neatly wrapped phrases for you today. But instead, I want to mark your achievements and wish you all the best in your future endeavors by offering you three things, a list, a fact, and an object. First, the list. David Hilbert's a very famous mathematician. He wrote papers elucidating all sorts of novel mathematical ideas. But the paper for which he is most famous, that he delivered in 1900 at a math conference in Paris, contained no new math. It was a list. He listed the 10 most important math problems that, in his mind, should be solved in the next 100 years. A fact. Chat GPT, which has all the faculty worried that it's going to destroy their careers because you're going to use it to write papers, 
acquired 100 million users in two months. And if what you're thinking about this fact, 100 million users in two months, is that the pace at which new technologies are being widely adopted seems to be speeding up. You're absolutely correct. It took Netflix 10 years to reach 100 million users. Twitter did it in five years, Facebook in four and a half, WhatsApp in three and a half years, TikTok in only nine months, and now ChatGPT in two months. So it is a fact that new technologies are being invented and adopted at a rate never before seen in human history. And this is in large part because in order for growing societies to deal with the unavoidable limitations imposed upon them by resource constraint, we must innovate to survive. Jeffrey West is a physicist at Santa Fe Institute, and he explains it this way. The only way to avoid stagnation from a shortage of resources is to change something. We call this an innovation cycle, and they are clearly apparent throughout history. There's the invention of the steam engine, the car, and the digital revolution. What these all have in common is that they allow society to continue to grow. That's the good news. The problem with this theory of growth and innovation, though, is that innovation has a price of its own. As the size of an economy expands, West's mathematical equations predict that the time between innovation cycles must decrease. It took humans a long time to invent the steam engine, less time to invent the car, and less time again to invent the digital revolution. The end result of this speeding up is that we must continue to speed up, creating a kind of infinite positive speedback loop. Finally, an object. So we're ship owners. You didn't know this, but you're going to go forth from here and become a ship owner. And you and I both own ships. And we both sail around the coast. And we both hit rocks on our ship's sink. So that's a problem. So I invent a new technology called a lighthouse. And I come to you and I say, I have this great idea. I've invented a lighthouse. Will you give me some money to build the lighthouse so our ship stops sinking off the coast? And if you're a rational economic being, you say, nah, you build the lighthouse. And why can you say that? You can say that because light from a lighthouse is non-rival. I can use it, you can use it, but we don't use it up. And it's non-excludable. If I build the lighthouse, I can't stop you from seeing the light, and I can't stop you from saving your ship as well as my ship. For those of you who study economics during your time here, you will recognize this as a classical public good. And the problem with public goods is that because they are non-rival and non-excludable, people can free ride. You can say, I'm not going to pay. Jeff, you go build the lighthouse. And yet, you benefit from that lighthouse. So it turns out maybe I'm wrong. Maybe my list and my fact and my object do actually reduce to some pithy atherisms for you. So here they are. Make a list. Make a list of the most important problems of your time. Find out where those problems are and work on them. Some of the problems that David Hilbert listed in 1900 still are not solved. And much of the math that he galvanized didn't end up specifically solving a problem he identified, but spilled over and benefited other areas of math. If you identify the right problems and work on them hard, you may or may not solve them, but I promise you that the work you will do will create enduring value for the world. Second aphorism, engage the facts. Recognize that the world will rely on new innovation cycles to reach solutions for these problems that you're going to identify. But be wary of the cost of an ever-increasing rate of change. As we have all experienced, social, cultural, political, environmental impacts of this rate of change are hugely challenging for all of us. And we must take this into account as we seek out solutions to our problems. And so the last aphorism I leave you with is build lighthouses. One way to solve these problems and to mitigate the cost of a rapid innovation cycle is to build public goods that benefit both ourselves and others. Because we know these types of solutions do not naturally arise through the simple economics of supply and demand, we must consciously realize that we are all dependent on others for our well-being. 
and at least some of us must take up the challenge of building the lighthouses necessary for the rest of us to avoid crashing on the rocky shore. Class of 2023, we look forward eagerly to watching you go forth and engage in the world that is, but we are counting on you to go forth and build the world that ought to be. Congratulations and best wishes. We now welcome our alumna speaker, Maria Golubeva, former Minister of the Interior of Latvia and alumna of CU's Department of History. Maria Golubeva is a distinguished non-resident fellow at the Center for European Policy Analysis. She has served as a member of the Latvian Parliament and chair of the European Affairs Commission. Maria developed and implemented Latvia's response to the refugee crisis following the Russian invasion of Ukraine. She has a PhD in history from the University of Cambridge and previously lectured on politics at Riga Strandins University. We warmly welcome Maria as our distinguished alumna speaker. Dear CU graduates and wider CU community, it's an immense honor to celebrate your achievements here today. And I must say, I hold my breath when I see this room so full of potential. And of course, I reflect on my own graduation in 1995 in Budapest. Now, this university has come a very long way from the place where students from the former communist bloc first met, met the great names and minds of the Western academic world, to a place which was a center of resistance to authoritarianism in Hungary and now to an international university here in Vienna. And today, all of you, even those whose studies were disrupted by Russia's aggression in Ukraine, are full participants in the international academic community. And whatever your future choices, whether you are going to work in public institutions or in the private sector or in academic research and teaching, you are uh, overall in a good place here and now. Now, having said that, I shall not pretend that it is easy to be optimistic about a common future at this time and date, um, when you think of the ravages, ravages the war and climate change are, are causing today and most likely will cause tomorrow, or the disruption that powerful technology can bring. But there is something that allows us to hope for a positive development, and it is the combination of competence and principle. Now, you have competence thanks to your education at CU. And soon you will have a chance to show through your work, for your interaction with society, that you have principles. That was my main takeaway from this university, not so much specific academic professional skills um, of a historian that I only exercised for a few years, I must admit, before switching to a career in policy analysis and then in politics, nor the knowledge of cultural heritage that the first generations of CEU professors imparted on us all this rich Austro-Hungarian context of Central Europe. In the end, it was the adherence to open society and intellectual freedom that this university teaches and something that stays with you and you keep looking to, not without failing it at times, through your life. That and the sense that one has to play an active part in the transformations that our societies undergo. I'm sure for many of you, the year at CU has been transformative. For me, it has been a huge shock, and it changed me a lot. And the change went on long after I left here. And I found myself, after some years, teaching bachelor students in Riga about the ideas of open society and liberal democracy, to which I must admit I was quite indifferent when I was a history student here. So today, more than ever, CU is, has a critical role to play um, in the times when some countries around us are slipping back, it seems, to authoritarianism. And in this context, I have a special message for graduates who might find themselves returning to environments which are hostile to individual freedom and free intellectual inquiry. I know it is hard, it is highly uncomfortable, but if you can, try not to be afraid to be in the minority. If there is anything that politics teaches, that's that too much compromise with populists, nationalists, and potential authoritarians never leads to more humane or more effective policies. It just doesn't work that way. I also have a short special message to female graduates. 
When you start having doubts whether you're good enough for a new professional opportunity, remember that more than 60% of women have those doubts. It's called the imposter syndrome. And when women reach high positions, it's 75%. Now, you probably don't believe that 75% of women leaders are incompetent. So it's just a psychological thing. Don't give in. Grab those professional opportunities and be great. And I know you can. And finally, to Yevhen, the graduate from Ukraine, and the students of the Invisible University in Ukraine. The fact that you have found time amid war and vast human tragedy to pursue your studies is incredible and inspiring. And it shows what you're capable of and bears witness to the amazing future of your country. Ukraina Peremoje. And once again, thank you for the honor and the joy of being with you here on your very special day. It is a humbling experience and also a very inspiring one. I'm glad to be part of your celebration. Thank you. We now welcome our student speaker, Yevhen Yashchuk. After earning a bachelor's degree in history and archaeology at the National University of Kyiv Academy, Yevhen joined the CU History Department in 2021 to do an MA. Since April 2022, he's also been a mentor and chief student coordinator at CU's Invisible U University for Ukraine. Yevhen is going to continue his research to do a doctorate at Oxford University this fall. Welcome, Yevhen. Welcome, distinguished guests, members of CU board, faculty, staff, and most of all, my dear graduates. <laughs> I'm saying my, even though we presumably meet for the first time today, but I feel you in my heart. I felt that for a long time, because we've been creating the experiences of CU. I felt that from the first days of my time in Vienna, affected by COVID pandemic, when we had to do the PCR tests. Does anyone still remember those blue boxes? I felt it, I felt this togetherness in us when we stand, stand with the protesting Iranian women last fall, or when we helped the initiatives to support people in Turkey and Syria who were affected by the dreadful earthquake this February. But it was already a full circle for me when the Russian invasion of Ukraine started in February of 2022. Uniting our efforts in helping each other, we've been building a new community here, and I'm glad to see the result of that. In her Nobel Peace Prize lecture, Alexandra Matvichuk emphasized that, I quote, it's time to assume the responsibility. We do not know how much of the time we still have. Those words resonated with me because I saw their implications in our everyday life here in Vienna. CEU has not been here for long, but it has become special for me. It became special long before that, when I entered my BA studies in Ukraine, I found out that three of my professors were CEU graduates. They were my introduction to CEU, and thanks to them, I'm standing in front of you here. Those three women are continuing teaching the people who will most probably join the CEU community soon. And I'm so proud of being their student because they were conducting seminars and lectures on the Stalin and Amis blackouts. I also realized the privilege of being here in a safe space in these walls in Vienna, while my colleagues from all ages are standing at the front line in hospitals or volunteering centers they themselves have founded. They are still students like any of us, but, and they are still keeping in touch with their professors and defend their thesis between their everyday duties. I'm also thinking about students who will never graduate, 
whom we may give only an issued diplomas to remember their student lives. At the same time, there still is a chance to help those people from war-affected or disaster-affected territories who want to maintain their studies or to pursue a degree. I saw, it, I saw the great education here, in these walls, in the walls of Kleinstrasse, in Vienna, and now I believe we can bring these approaches to help others to maintain their studies. Since April last year, I've joined the, in, the Invisible University for Ukraine, another great initiative established at CEU to help people from Ukrainian universities to maintain their studies. We've been working with 400 students and looking at their experiences, I saw how passionate they were in what they were doing, joining other classes from shelters, from the war zones, and from, and from the territories temporarily occupied by the Russian Federation. Knowing the circumstances made me think about the reasons for the evil those students had to face. You know, Hannah Arendt, in her book, uh, which I would quote, uh, famously proclaimed that basically there is a lesson, the lesson of the fearsome, word and thought-defined banality of evil. But at some point I realized that I simply needed to put Hannah Arendt aside and go to Lord's event with medical supplies. I realized that evil was too banal to read additionally about it. It hurt people and those who survived needed medical treatment. Supplies I loaded, like this emergency tourniquet, which will be delivered to Ukraine in a few days, may save their lives. And new sinkers will not have to sink through their deaths again. But after the van departs, I came back to reading Hannah Arendt, because I believe that there still is a need to speak to speak with those whose voices we do not hear in a wide audience, those whose voices are needed to be heard. And here we are to do that, because we had the privilege for that at CEU. We had to stand with them and speak with them together. We had the privilege to create normality within the QS class and steel walls while the, wars, while the world was on fire. We had the privilege to reflect, to think about the burning, while the time for good words has passed. So let's, let us act together, let's unite our efforts and give a voice to those who need it. But at this moment, I would like you to look around. You look magnificent tonight. Let's take our beauty and strength when we, make, when we make step out of these walls into the walls. Congratulations, my dear graduates. We will now have a short musical interlude. We have here today four wonderful musicians who have joined forces, especially for this occasion. We've asked them to perform music from Afghanistan in honor of the recipients of this year's Open Society Prize. Please welcome Omid Darvish, Savin Hazin, Haida Khan, and Helen Glucksham.
دلم تمنای در دلم تمنای کوسار پنچیر است آرزو من سیر نامزار پنچیر در دلم تمنای کوسار پنچیر است آرزوی من سیر آرزوی من سیر لالزار پنچیر دلم تمنای کوسار شنچیر است در دلم تمنای کوسار پنچیر است آرزوی من سیر آرزوی من سیر لال زار پنشیر از در دلم زمان نای کوزار پنشیر We continue now with the conferral of master's degrees by the President and Rector. 
the heads of the academic departments and programs will call each candidate to step onto the stage and come forward to be greeted by the president and rector, Dr. Soros, and the chair of the board. Candidates for the master's degrees of the class of 2023, please rise. President and Rector, there are 448 graduating master's degree students present here today, as well as 20 graduates of non-degree programs. I would like to ask you to confer the master's degrees on our students and acknowledge the participants of our non-degree programs. By the authority vested in me by the Charter and Trustees of the Central European University, I now confer upon you your master's degrees. Congratulations once again to all of you. Please be seated. First, candidates for the Master of Arts and Master of Science degrees from the Department of Economics and Business will be presented by the Department Head, Professor Adam Zavadovsky. Candidates for the Master of Arts and Master of Science degrees from the Department of Economics and Business, please step onto the stage and come forward as your names are called. Uh, candidates for the Master of Arts degree in Economics, Malaika Agarwal, India. <laughs> Mukamejan Asan, Kazakhstan. <laughs> Mehmet Ataberk Atan, Turkey. Sarangu Ganbat, Mongolia. Zohre Gashemi, Islam, Islamic Republic of Iran. Joao Nobrega Pereira Teixeira, Brazil. Balint Paragi, Hungary. Christoph Reisinger, Hungary. <laughs> Gulsanam Rozikova, Uzbekistan. <laughs> Yigit Takmishoglu, Turkey. <laughs> Aida Toktogulova, Kyrgyzstan. Yu Shi, China. <laughs> Daria Yarmolova, Ukraine. <laughs> Sherkan Zumagaziev, Kazakhstan. And now, candidates for Master of Arts degree in Economic Policy in uh, Global Markets. Marta Bernardi, Italy. Senja Eremic, Croatia. Carolina Hamburger, Austria. (laughs) 
Daniel Homlock Hungary. Sen Moon Ja Myanmar. Irfana Katun Pakistan. Tasnim Murad Mamun Bangladesh. Gohar Mikrichian Armenia. Victoria Mosby, United States of America. Chi Han Nguyen, Vietnam. Huang Dien Han Nguyen, Vietnam. Sohaila Nuri, Afghanistan. Erlan Osmongaziev, Kyrgyzstan. Christian Petro, Albania. George Prihodansky, Bulgaria. João Reis, Portugal. <laughs> Rahmatullah Samim, Afghanistan. Tansum Tanya, Bangladesh. And now the candidates for the Master of Science degree in Business Analytics. Akos Almashi, Hungary. Hanna Asipovic, Belarus. Shahana Ayobi, Afghanistan. Alima Jambayeva, Kyrgyzstan. Naida Jigal, Bosnia and Herzegovina. <laughs> Chun Hua Su, Taiwan. <laughs> Hassan Khan, Pakistan. Tunai Tokmak, Turkey. And now our candidates for Master of Science degree in Finance. Faith Amaro, Uganda. Kamila Kurbun Mamadova, Tajikistan. <laughs> Davis Max, Latvia. Adrian Marka, Hungary. Valeria of Charenko, Ukraine. (laughs) 
Aigerim Danjarikova, Kazakhstan. Chaba Kish, Hungary. And now, candidates for the Master of Business Administration in Global Executive Management will be presented by the Faculty Program Director, Professor Maciej Kislowski. Candidates for Master of Business Administration degree in Global Executive Management, the EMBA for the Open World, are Victoria Antal, <laughs> Tamas Bekeshi. Yvette Benz. Chaba Bordas. Olivier Bruchovic. Radana Brabnikova. Stanislav Daniel. Silvia Ekres. Esther Enrodi. Kimbat Filin. Zoltan Gyoke. Natalia Yarkova. <laughs> Aline Kalam. <laughs> Athanasios Karatanos. Ferenc Kish. <laughs> Erwin Klemper. <laughs> Lydia Kautskazuk. Mate Kurt. <laughs> Zakare Lati. Langmar (מחיאות 
Levan Lascava. Giorgi Lomidze. Gabor Makai. Mirosława Magdalena Makuchowska. Michaj Manuku. Sorena Messeli. Laszlo Nemes. Andras Omaiteni. Natalia Osko Jakab. Alina Petuchova. Daniel Plech. Roza Potsai. David Ruzicka. Anna Susarenko. Mate Seki. Tamas Andras Tordai. Zol Tork. Christian Url. Marek Wisnowski. Konstantin Witek Salzberg. And David Paweł Wojtyczka. Candidates for the Master of Science degrees from the Department of Environmental Sciences and Policy will be presented by their department head, Professor Brandon Anthony. Candidates for the Master of Science degrees from the Department of Environmental Sciences and Policy, please step onto the stage and come forward as your names are called. Candidates for the Master of Science degree in Environmental Sciences and Policy are Idris Adorinto, Nigeria. <laughs> Ali Al Jamal, Syrian Arab Republic. <laughs> Jonathan Alpano, Australia. 
Ruth Barsa, Liberia. Dalia Delitz, Croatia. Maria Fomina, Germany. Alexi Kim, Kazakhstan. Lovisa Kulna Nelson, Sweden. Montserrat Mendoza Acero, Mexico. Samantha Nassen, United States of America. Gabor Oat, Hungary. Maria Poyato Sala, Spain. Ludmila Sirichenko, Ukraine. Maria Smirnova, Ukraine. Lizzie von Megan, Netherlands. Yu Zhang, China. Candidates for the Master of Science degree in Environmental Sciences Policy and Management, also known as MESPOM, are Lisa Agustina, Indonesia. Malik Al Jabai, Lebanon. Marco Nico Bololoy, Philippines. Emmanuel Bestman, Liberia. Philomene Bloch, France. Renz Homer Cirillo, Philippines. Ashmita Chakuli, Nepal. Sarah Cox, United States of America. Diana Michelle Davila Ronquillo, Ecuador. Moritz Drescher, Germany. Rose Fitzgerald, New Zealand. Luca Francini, Italy. Mariam Gregorian, Armenia. Don Hak Gu, Republic of Korea. Akshay Anil Jamdari, India. Erica Kalkofen, United States of America. Boria Malnuri Erdush, France. Carmen Margiota, Italy. Anna Monroy Shaparo, Mexico. Brooke Moore, United States of America. Ines Ort and Alonso, Netherlands. Athulia Purushothaman, India. Yeah. 
Noelia Solana Guinden, Costa Rica. Moray Swanson, Scotland. <laughs> Yin Thant, Myanmar. Catherine Valls, South Africa. Nicolette Wedgwood Young, United Kingdom. Kaya Zimmerman, Germany. Candidates for the Master of Arts degrees from the Department of Gender Studies will be presented by the Department Head, Professor Nadia jones Gailani. Candidates for the Masters of Arts degrees from the Department of Gender Studies, please step onto the stage and come forward as your names are called. Candidates for the Masters of Arts degree in Critical Gender Studies two-year program are Victoria Churlin, Croatia. <laughs> Doris Donnellan, United States of America. Rauda Elaskari, Egypt. Castel Franco Garibay, Mexico. Nerea Gonzalez, Spain. Lilith Jacobian, Armenia. Zinar Mohammed, Nigeria. Ong Zhao Mio, Myanmar. Amna Noreen, Pakistan. Yanka Novak, Hungary. Sara Anselmo, Portugal. Farin Rahman, Bangladesh. Sneha Sanders, India. Liridona Siarina, Kosovo. Sara Simic, Croatia. Salma Yassin, Lebanon. <laughs> Alina Wallace Young, United Kingdom. <laughs> Rowin Youssef, Egypt. Candidate for the Masters of Arts degree in Gender Studies one-year program are Rita Halgato, Hungary. <laughs> Tamara Kurtzidze, Ukraine.
Shadi Mandani, Islamic Republic of Iran. Manuela Rondon Triana, Colombia. Sanjana Sanjana, India. Eugenia Selesnova, Ukraine. Azadeh Shamsi, Islamic Republic of Iran. Victoria Schwaher, Ukraine. Shravya Valala, India. Candidates for the Master of Arts degree in Women's and Gender Studies, also known as Gemma, are <laughs> Makabat Boranbay, Kazakhstan. <laughs> Diona Hoja, Kosovo. Evelyn Joan Oldham, United States of America. Diana Romina Puerto Mesho, Argentina. Mary Carmen Rubacalva Oliveros, Mexico. <laughs> Catherine Sarah Imogen Rudolph, South Africa. Irene Sandoval Arteaga, Mexico. Lydia Weir, United States of America. Candidates for the Master of Arts degree in European Women's and Gender History, also known as Matilda, are Florence Boldion, United Kingdom. Anna Maria Kojelnik, Slovenia. Candidates for the Master of Arts degrees from the Department of History will be presented by the Department Head, Professor Jan Hennings. Candidates for the Master of Arts degrees from the Department of History, please step onto the stage and come forward as your names are called. Candidates for the Master of Arts degree in Comparative History one-year program are Anna Archina. Russian Federation. Ken Beckers, the Netherlands. Razmi Binoy, India. Serhi Butko, Ukraine. Alfonso Carrera Cabrera, Mexico. <laughs> C. 
Svetlana Dorfan, Ukraine. Carly Goody, United States of America. Brooklyn Hortenstein, United States of America. Min Su Jeon, Republic of Korea. <laughs> Yulia Khabubiluna, Russian Federation. <laughs> Titi Mohapatra, India. <laughs> Yuri Polishchuk, Ukraine. <laughs> Nana Saralishvili, Georgia. Polina Vishnevskaya, Belarus. <laughs> Candidates for the Master of Arts degree in Comparative History, Comparative History from 1500 till the present time are Gorano Atayeva, Kyrgyzstan. <laughs> Ananya Kasias, India. Mansur Elgin, Turkey. Gunsu Erdogan, Turkey. Pavel Yushin, Russian Federation. Turin Nain, Myanmar. Fatma Noor Özdemir, Turkey. Yu Hao Peng, Taiwan. And Yefhan Yashuk, Ukraine. <laughs> Candidates for the Master of Arts degree in History in the Public Sphere, also known as HIPS, are Keith Dagyo, Philippines. Broom Dezembro Iazetti, Brazil. <laughs> Lucas Fulpintesta, Argentina. Candidates for the Master of Arts degrees from the Department of International Relations will be presented by their department head, Professor Thomas Fetzer. Dear graduates, for master's degrees in international relations, please step onto the stage as your names are called. Candidates for the Master's of Arts degrees in International Relations one year program are Panis Bahmani, Islamic Republic of Iran. <laughs> Yegor Dmitrievich Balalikin, Russian Federation. <laughs> Alisa Buzurin, Republic of Moldova. Rebecca Julia Dizzy Miller, Ireland. Jack Johnson, United Kingdom. Anastasia Kovac, Ukraine. Nicola Grace McBride, United States of America.
Sara Sofia Natividad, Philippines. Letizia Elena Roman, Romania. And Vasileo Sivas, Greece. Candidates for the Master of Arts degree in International Relations two-year program are Rim Afate, Morocco. Ilaria Maria Bergler, Austria. Janneke Bonstra, Netherlands. Lara Maria Breitmose, Germany. Mark Flesser, Germany. Angelo Krüger, Germany. Lili Agnes Leitner, Hungary. Paulina Charlotte Matt, Austria. Connor Edward Mullen, United States of America. Florian Thomas Nye, Germany. Audacia Alicia Ngunza, Angola. Omer Farouk Özkilinc, Turkey. Gabo Andras Pap, Hungary. Katarina Potoska, Ukraine. Anastasia Posnova, Russian Federation. Vikrama Nimaya Premachandra, Sri Lanka. Neve Elizabeth Ponton, United Kingdom. Anya Radonich, Montenegro. Oliver Rutman, United States of America. Ashraf Saad, Afghanistan. Alice Marguerite Somodi, Belgium. Jack Lambert Strosser, United States of America. Jacopo Venturi, Italy. And Matea Seradic, North Macedonia. Congratulations. Candidates for the Master of Laws and Master of Arts degrees from the Department of Legal Studies will be presented by the Department Head, Professor Tibor Taiti. Students of the Legal Studies Department, please step forward, step on the stage as your names are called. First, the candidates for the Masters of Laws degrees in Comparative Constitutional Law, which are Chernor Mohamed Musa Bunania Bari, Sierra Leone. Borana Fucci, Albania. Ragi Makta, Bangladesh. João Victor Morales Salani, Brazil. Oluvati Milehin Ayobola Opabola, Nigeria, Nigeria. Ludovic Siwa, Canada.
Purna Sriharsha Tumati India. Farhan Zia India. Candidates for the Master of Laws degree in Human Rights are Rati Galakvaridze, Georgia. Jipariza Yumagazieva, Kyrgyzstan. Anna Liudva, Ukraine. Arina Lupu, Ukraine. Gabriel Mitavlinda, Republic of Moldova. Bruna Rafaela de Santana Santos, Brazil. Ekaterina Toparova, Russian Federation. Sena Uslu, Turkey. Elizaveta Vakatova, Russian Federation. Then candidates for the Master of Arts degree in Human Rights are Syed Yufus Al Muhabda, Germany, Sara Benedet Piano, Spain, Desiree Ann Driscoll, United States of America, Ginmaima Faido dos Santos, Brazil. Polina Gorlova, Russian Federation. Samire Gurgorovci, Kosovo. Majdolin Kaler Mohamed, Syrian Arab Republic. Afnan Hussain, Kota Dika, India. Isabella Maria Mox, France. Gauri. Niranjana, India. Violeta Odagiu, Republic of Moldova. Sumesh Shivakoti, Nepal. Eliza Tovizi, Hungary. Caroline Wilken Fricke, Germany. Tibe and Asnake Volde, Ethiopia. <laughs> Finally, candidates for the Master of Laws degree in Global Business Law and Regulation, who are Shivang Agarwal, India, Giovanni Astegiano, Italy, Alexander Azizova, Ukraine. Mariam Dograshvili, Georgia. V. Tuong Tuong, Vietnam. Mariam Mekakidze, Georgia. Anastasia Karpovska, Ukraine. Tekla Kundadze, Georgia. Rafiga Malikova, Azerbaijan. Irakli Managadze, Georgia. Ignacio Rejon Linares, Spain. Sonia Safro, Latvia. Peter Sedlar, Slovakia. Daniel Sobolev, Russian Federation. Luis Carlos de Souza, Jr., Brazil. Jana Stanojevic, Serbia. Gospod Instruen of Tonev, Bulgaria. (laughs) 
Candidates for the Master of Arts degrees from the Department of Medieval Studies will be presented by the department head, Professor Daniel Zeman. Candidates for the Master of Arts degrees from the Department of Medieval Studies, please step onto the stage and come forward as your names are called. Candidates for the Master of Arts degree in late antique, medieval, and early modern studies are Cornel Andras Illes, Hungary. Rasko Dragan Stanojevic, Serbia. <laughs> Candidates for the Master of Arts degree in Comparative History, Late Antique, Medieval, and Renaissance Studies are Guillermo Javier Bispa Cabrera from Venezuela. Andrei Dumitrescu. Romania, Amine Zoeda Yilmaz from Turkey, candidates for the Master of Arts degrees in Cultural Heritage Studies will be presented by the Program Director, Professor Josef Laszlowski. Candidates for the Master of Arts degree in Cultural Heritage Studies, Academic Research Policy and Management, please step on the stage and come forward as your names are called. Candidates for the Master of Arts degree in Cultural Heritage Studies, Academic Research Policy and Management are Mahmoud Barakat, Syrian Arab Republic. Mariana Di Bella Diaz de Leon, Mexico. <laughs> Nelia Zambayeva, Kyrgyzstan. <laughs> Samah Mohamed Mohsen Ibrahim, Egypt. <laughs> Gopalas Mihailovskis, Lithuania. Alicia Sijipati, Nepal. Isabel Grace Thomas, United Kingdom. Dendup Shevang, Bhutan. Candidates for the Master of Arts degrees from the Programme of Nationalism Studies will be presented by the Programme Head, Professor Michael Miller. Candidates for the Masters of Art degrees from the Nationalism Studies Programme, please step onto the stage and come forward as your names are called. Asya Araikovna Budagyan, Russian Federation. Elif Chatay, Turkey. Davi Chachalevsky, Poland. Benjamin John Mandler, United States of America. Kirsten Terrell, United States of America. Devin J. Sheik Tuthman, United States of America. Okay. And candidates for the Masters of Art degree in Nationalism Studies two-year program are Michael Achobadze, Georgia. Kuiming Kai, China. Lucas Allen Duncan, United States of America. <laughs> Martin Hoja, Slovakia. Matea Korda, Croatia. 
Samantha Cristina Alves Lima, Brazil. Anna Barbara Nod, Hungary. Britton David Perry, United States of America. Blanca Silashi, Hungary. Muga Uz, Turkey. Suim Khan Ulanbek Kizi, Kyrgyzstan. Lawrence Otto Vitali, Italy. Elizaveta Zolotorova, Ukraine. Candidates for the Master of Arts degrees from the Department of Philosophy will be presented by Professor Kotlin Farkas. Candidates for the Master of Arts degree from the Department of Philosophy, please step onto the stage and come forward as your names are called. Proudly presenting the candidates for the Master of Arts degree in Philosophy, one year program, Zach Boynton from the United Kingdom. Ronan Brooks from the United States of America. Noah Lande from the United States of America. Ludovica Medaia from Italy. Jesse Schmeitzer from the United States of America. And now, proudly presenting the candidates for the Master of Arts degree in Philosophy for the two-year program, Balint Bekefi from Hungary, <laughs> Maria Fedorova from the Russian Federation, <laughs> Francisco Hernandez Gutierrez from Mexico, Echem Kavas from Turkey. <laughs> Rafa Kloszek from Poland. <laughs> Pavlo Kostin from Ukraine. Ali Musareza from the Islamic Republic of Iran. <laughs> Fumia Nachigami from Japan. <laughs> Joan Pinheiro de Silva from Portugal. Josepi Raikkonen from Finland. <laughs> Shabnam Singla. <laughs> Aida Uzel from Turkey. And last but not least, Abul Kayelan from Kazakhstan. Candidates for the Master of Arts degrees from the Department of Political Science will be presented by the Department Head, Professor Anil Duman. Master of Arts degree from Department of Political Science, please step onto the stage and come forward as your names are called. Candidates for the Master of Arts degree in Political Science one-year program are Aktin Akishev, Kyrgyzstan. (laughs) 
Suhaib Al Zubi, Syrian Arab Republic. <laughs> Nadyeda Boitsova, Russian Federation. <laughs> Greta Bordin, Italy. <laughs> Eda Canımana, Turkey. Turkey. <laughs> Leah Chikatiani, Georgia. <laughs> Olesia Dolhalyuk, Ukraine. <laughs> Daniel Augusto Garcia Porras, Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. <laughs> Alexander Ivkovic, Serbia. Kırlaç, Turkey. <gülüyor> Raife Cemre Kumla, Turkey. <gülüyor> Natalia Martin Fritzen, Brazil. <gülüyor> Svetoslav Naumov, Russian Federation. Laurent Anton Ohanrahain, Ireland. <laughs> Hannah Perenye, Hungary. <laughs> Petra Radic, Croatia. <laughs> Anuar Satmursin, Kazakhstan. Anna Savarin, Ukraine. <laughs> Abbas Shahrabi Farahani, Islamic Republic of Iran. <laughs> Nikita Storov, Russian Federation. Vladislav Siutkin, Russian Federation. <laughs> Chi Sun, China. <laughs> Nicolas Tissimas, Greece. Fatih Uyar, Turkey. <laughs> Sergey Zaharov, Russian Federation. <laughs> Aygerim Zoltas, Kazakhstan. <laughs> Candidates for the Master of Arts degree in Political Science two-year program are Maria Atanasova, Bulgaria. <laughs> Josipa Tivitic, Croatia. <laughs> Thomas Daniel Gillick Boyle, United Kingdom. <laughs> Suleyman Inaltekin, Albania. Yuji Natsuma, Japan. <laughs> Victoria Palchikova, Russian Federation. <laughs> Anushri Rastogi, India. <laughs> Yulia Lilian Sabo, Hungary. Matyash Andrei, Hungary. <laughs> Pu 
Mutuel Myanmar. Furkan Berkant Yavuz, United States of America. Asma Gaber Ahmed Yusuf, Egypt. Candidates for the master's degrees from the Department of Public Policy will be presented by the head of the Department of Public Policy, Professor Martin Kahanetz. Candidates for the master's and master's art degrees from the Department of Public Policy, please step onto the stage and come forward as your names are called. Candidates for the Master of Public Administration degree are Serjan Baftiari Montenegro. <laughs> Dennis Enslen, Germany. Olena Horlach, Ukraine. Blesham Ikaleshan, Democratic Republic of the Congo. Gerardo Ivan Jaramillo, Valencia, Colombia. Maximilian Knazar, Austria. Ileana Beatriz Marroquin Martinez, El Salvador. Vadim Naiko, Ukraine. Bipasha Nat, India. Anna Pasco, Ukraine. David Benze Reichert, Hungary. Karina Samhaber, Austria. Balash Aaron Chimoni, Hungary. Candidates for the Master of Arts degree in Public Policy one-year program are Aigarim Azimova, Kyrgyzstan Uyanga Chimgi, Mongolia Alexandra Feher, Hungary Tigran Hambardzumian, Armenia Jonah Helwig, United States of America. <laughs> Susanna Kardashian, Armenia. <laughs> Jose Victor Lozano Alvarado, Honduras. <laughs> Anna Michelidze, Georgia. <laughs> Travis Wayne Sanderson, United States of America. Alana Stefani Silva Candir, Brazil. Marzie Taeb, Islamic Republic of Iran. Tad Hong Tse, Hong Kong. Yulia Ivanivna Turba, Ukraine. Kirsty Sionet, Vas Spain, Scotland. Nikita Zenin, Ukraine. <laughs> Candidates for the Master of Arts in Public Policy MAPP degree of the Erasmus Mundus Master's Program are Aisha Akil Ahmed, Pakistan. <laughs> Erika Alexandra Druske, Angers, Canada. Christina Cebotariu, Romania. Ramani Davare, India. Mayra Lea Dominguez, United States of America. Felix Kreis, Germany.
Sofia Lamus Quintero, Canada. Angie Paola Montenegro Alvarado, Colombia. Siddharth Nair, India. Maria Trisha Julio Querijero, Philippines. Fabiana Marie Schmidt, Germany. Volavit Silijintana, Thailand. Lika Tsinsaze, Georgia. And Marius from Frankenhorst, Germany. Let me proudly present also candidates for the Master of Arts degrees in International Public Affairs programs, who are Emir Abrashi, Kosovo. Akmalion Akmedonio, Tajikistan. Ariela Briscuso, Italy. Timoteus Paul Goldinger, Austria. Leticia Hohoviller, Germany. Andrea Maria Ianosu, Romania. Kristina Kowalska, Slovakia. Ivana Rudinac, Serbia. <laughs> Stephanie and Songa, United States of America. <laughs> Pavel Tereshenko, Russian Federation. <laughs> and Tiana Jeraik, Republic of North Macedonia. Candidates for the Master of Arts degrees from the Department of Sociology and Social Anthropology will be pre presented by the Department Head, Professor Vlad Namescu. Candidates for the Master of Arts degrees from the Department of Sociology and Social Anthropology, please step onto the stage and come forward as your names are called. Candidates for the Master of Arts degree in Sociology and Social Anthropology one-year program are Emeke Gondos, Romania. Rosa Hergen, Austria. Mariam Kalandadze, Georgia. Uliana Kalinina, Russian Federation. Evgeny Leonov, Russian Federation. Joseph Pertel, United States of America. Caio Santos, Brazil. Anastasia Teslenko, Ukraine. <laughs> Candidates for the Master of Arts degree in Sociology and Social Anthropology two-year program are Annika Augustia, Germany. <laughs> Nana Yashvili, Georgia. Teona Ivashenko, Georgia. Zishan Mir, Indian Administrator, Kashmir.
Vikipanosian Lebanon. Damla Posta, Turkey. Sevtuya Ramadani, Serbia. Maria Katrinel Tonku, Romania. And all those who could not be here, but we're thinking of them. Thank you. We continue now with the awarding of the certificates for the university's Roma graduate preparation program. Graduates from the Romani Studies Postgraduate Specialization Program will be presented by Victoria Vainai, Academic Advisor of Roma Graduate Preparation Program. Students of the Roma Graduate Preparation Program, please step onto the stage and come forward as your names are called. Students of the Roma Graduate Preparation Program are Maria Aguilera Martin, Spain. <laughs> Dominika Bazova, Slovakia. <laughs> Maria Dominika, Romania. <laughs> Candela Herreros Andradas, Spain. Siliana Hisseini, Albania. <laughs> Ferenc Joja, Hungary. Thank you. Thank you. Fotos Kaitan, Turkey. <laughs> Donald Mirtali, Albania. Slobodan Stankovic, Serbia. <laughs> Zuha Gezidia, Turkey. <laughs> Claudio Vesi, Albania. We continue with the awarding of certificates for the university's OLIVE program. Graduates of the Open Learning Initiative University Preparation Program will be presented by Yulia Andjalka Furedi, the academic advisor. This year there are nine students present. Hi. So, candidates for the Open Learning Initiative training program OLIVE are Mati Jafari, Afghanistan. <laughs> Ayusha Lakandri, Nepal. Kaderi Matiula. Kaderi Matiula, Afghanistan. Cornelius, sorry. Cornelius Kamar, Pakistan. Faina Radinska, Ukraine. <laughs> Mustafa Shinvari, Afghanistan. <laughs> Sadek Rezai, Afghanistan. Svetlana Shinkarenko, Ukraine. <laughs> 
Matvey Zinkivsky, Ukraine. We will now continue with the conferral of doctoral degrees. Since the Middle Ages, it's been an academic custom that those who enter the highest level of scholarly achievement receive a ceremonial hood as a sign of their new academic status. Today, we induct a new body of scholars into the academy as we award them with this, our highest degree. Central European University is proud to announce that this academic year, 58 doctoral students are graduating. Not all can be present at the ceremony today. We shall now present the doctoral degrees to those candidates who are present today. Doctoral candidates, please rise. President and Rector, the candidates who stand in front of you have fulfilled all the requirements of the doctoral degrees of Central European University. The faculty of Central European University recommend that they be awarded doctoral degrees. By the authority vested in me by the Charter and the Trustees of the Central European University, I now confer upon you your doctoral degrees. Congratulations once again. I will now ask the supervisors and the escorting faculty members to assist us in the doctoral hooding ceremony. We thank you for your guidance and advice over the years, and we congratulate you, too, on their success. Please rise and be recognized. <laughs> doctoral graduates, please remove your caps. Turn left and hand your hood to the faculty member behind you. Please turn to face the audience. Faculty members, please raise the hood and place it over the head of the doctoral graduate in front of you. Doctoral graduates, please put your caps back on. And supervisors and faculty members, please be seated. And now I call the doctoral graduates to move to the front of the stage to receive their diplomas. Doctoral graduates, please turn to the left and line up on the steps of the platform. Please step forward and receive your diplomas and be greeted by the President and Rector when your name is called. I'm calling to the front of the stage Doctors of Philosophy in Cognitive Science, Francesca Bonalumi from Italy, <laughs> Supervisor Christoph Heinz, Paula Fischer from Hungary, Supervisor Erno Teglash. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Business Administration, Nenad Apostoskoli, <laughs> Republic of North Macedonia. Supervisor Yusuf Akbar. 
Anas Karsatsi, Morocco. Supervisor, Yusuf Akbar. Doctors of Philosophy in Comparative Gender Studies. Andres Felipe Sarabia Valdez from Colombia. Supervisor, Judith Shandor. Maria Mikhailovna Semishna from Ukraine. Supervisors Yasmina Lukic Hesinyun. Doctors of Philosophy in Comparative History. Martin Pieka, Slovakia and Canada. Supervisor Matthias Riedel. Doctors of Juridical Science. Doriana Bojanowska Popowska, Republic of North Macedonia. Supervisor Andras Scheil. Matthew Paul Andre de Clerd, Canada. Supervisors Julia Buxton Tibotaiti. Doctors of Philosophy in Medieval Studies. Peter Ivanov Parvanov from Bulgaria. Supervisor Josef Laslovsky. Radu Mustata from Romania. Supervisors Istvan Petzel Falkamenze. Doctor of Philosophy in Philosophy. Nikhil Mahant from India. Supervisor Tim Crane. Doctors of Philosophy in Sociology and Social Anthropology. Ezgichan Ozdemir in Turkey. Supervisor Dorit Geva. Sarah Hani Shekhar Rizkala from Egypt. Supervisor Dorit Geva. <laughs> Doctors of Philosophy in Political Science. Andrei Kosmin Maksut from Romania. Adrienne Nierchok from Hungary. Supervisor Livi Matei. R.G. Prix from Estonia. Supervisor Laszlo Choba. Kirill Shamiev, Russian, Russian Federation. Supervisor Christoph Laroche. Nemanja Stankov from Montenegro. Supervisor Levente Litvoy. Christina Sabo from Hungary. Supervisor Caitlin Brown. Emil Vargovic from Croatia. Supervisor Zoltan Miklosi. Burtein Zorigd from Hungary. Supervisor Gabor Torka. Doctoral graduates, please be seated. We now move to the Outstanding Academic Achievement Awards. CU prides itself on the work and success of its students. Every year, we honor graduating master's students who have achieved the highest GPA based on their coursework and their programs, and PhD students have defended the best dissertations. Recipients of these awards, please stand up and be recognized by the audience. Congratulations to the winners of these awards.
It is with great pleasure that I'm announcing the recipients of the Best PhD Dissertation Award for the academic year 2022-23. I would like to invite our Pro-Rector for Research and Faculty, Agnes Battery, to give these awards to the students. The University Doctoral Committee recommends that the following recent PhDs received awards. Radu Mustata, in the Department of Medieval Studies. The title of his dissertation is, please, come. The title of his dissertation is The Malabar Seminary, The Syriac Legacy of Francisco Ross, SJ. Marko Milkovic from the Department of History, who cannot be with us today. The title of his dissertation is Tito's Proliferation Puzzle, the Yugoslav Nuclear Program, 1948 to 1970. The third award is split between the following two nominees who are judged by the committee to be equally deserving. Anna Maria Burbeck Kiritsoyu, from the Department of Sociology and Social Anthropology. The title of her dissertation is Making Virtue Out of Necessity in a Southern Romanian Mahala. And Doriana Boyanskova Popovska, from Legal Studies. The title of her dissertation is Reverse Secularization and the, and the Limits of Constitutional Secularism. I would like to congratulate these outstanding new PhD graduates on their exceptional accomplishments and wish them every success in their future endeavors. It's with great pleasure now that I'm announcing the names of the recipients of the 2023 Excellent Awards. CU prides itself on having the most dedicated academic and non-academic staff. This year's recipients exemplify that through their contributions within and beyond CU. Congratulations to all the winners and thank you on behalf of us all at CU. We're proud of everything that you've accomplished in this past year. And now our President and Rector, Shalini Randaria, will give out the awards. The recipients of the 2023 Excellence Awards are, for the CEU Teaching Excellence Award, Zimena Korowska. <laughs> Zimena is an Associate Professor in the CEU Department of International Relations. The CEU Research Excellence Award was given to two um, professors, Zolt, en Zolt Enyedi and Adam Seidel. Jolt Enyedi is a professor in the Department of Political Science. Adam Seidel is a professor in the Department of Economics and Business. The CU Staff, Ex Staff Excellence Award is shared by Lisa Outsinger and, and Stephanie Heidinger. Lisa is our Student Wellbeing Coordinator. And Stephanie, who cannot be here today, is Executive Assistant to our Chief Operating Officer. Congratulations to you both. Our two Community Service Excellence Awards go to Bolaj Trentiani and Dora Sharoshi. Bolaj Trentiani, who cannot be with us today, is a Professor in the Department of History and a Director of the Very Successful History in the Public Sphere. He's also one of the founders of the Invisible University of Ukraine. Dora Shaurashi is Director of Facilities. She's underpinned CU's ability to successfully maintain two locations. And now we move on to our final prize and award, which is the CU Open Society Prize. It is a pleasure and a privilege to introduce the next part of our ceremony. The CU Open Society Prize is given to outstanding individuals, groups, or organizations that have made significant contributions to advancing open society ideals by promoting democracy, human rights, and social justice. The 2023 CU Open Society Prize is being awarded to the Afghan women and girls.
Kashtana Durani, Zeba Mitsaye, Munisa Mubarez, Tamara Parani, Sumia Tora, Aydin Saba, Yakubi will receive the prize on behalf of the Afghan women and girls. Three of them are present here today, Pashtana, Zeba, and Sumia. No words or pictures will do injustice to the incredible struggles this year's recipients have endured and the strength and resilience they have shown. But since not all of them can be here today, we will give them a voice and hear from them all in this video. We uh, conducted several protests in the uh, Kabul, and a lot of the Taliban soldiers uh, came and surrounded us. There is no open space. There's a crackdown on women from being able to receive education, from being able to work, from being able to be in public spaces. And when you don't have that space, that does not, that really inhibits your ability to envision what an open society can look like and how you can live your life to its full potential. But it also prevents you from being able to, um, from being able to support one another. I feel truly humbled and honored um, to be receiving this award and thank you very much. Um, more importantly, I see it as an opportunity for me to um, voice my demand and for all my sisters back home um, for a dignified life um, because um, what has been going on in Afghanistan for over um, for almost two years now um, is not acceptable and I truly believe that um, the girls of Afghanistan, the women of Afghanistan, they more they need more recognition, and um, such awards um, are um, uh, perfect um, examples of that. Tanho rahe ke ma fikr me kardim mardom ra me tana ba azadishan bara sana ba hafishan istadagi ba itrazat e. مدنی بود دل ازی که دو زمان ما نمیتونستیم سلا بگیریم بجنگیم و کاردگی انجام بتیم و تنها راهی که داشتیم همین اعتراضات ما بود و باید استادگی میکردیم We shouldn't recognize that system that political leader that government, they are against the women. They never knew the women or uh, 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 as a part of the society. If now the access to learning have completely diminished the way it was diminished for the past 20 years for all the ruder girls, you know. So now we employ and uh, make sure we create all sorts of models like radio learning, like uh, digital learning, like in-person learning, not only to access education, but the right to socialize, mobilize, educate yourself, earn something uh, through freelancing, anything that would help you have your identity, but at the same time have access to those rights, even if it's in a very restricted form at the moment. Uh, 
فضای آموزشگاه یک فضای دیگه هست که دانش آموز میتونه عالی تر خوب تر یاد بگیره نسبت به فضای یک خانه ولی باز هم مجبور بودیم از اینکه شاگردای ما به حد علاقه داشتن شوق داشتن زحمت کشیده بودن وقتی ما طرف اونا میدیدیم و هم روزی که اونا آموزشگاه ما رو بسته کردن اینا هم مگشان گریه کرده از آموزشگاه بیرون شدن یعنی شخص خودم بسیار نگران شدم و هیچ وقتی او روزی سیاه یادم نمیره بنابر این دلایل ما خواستیم هر قسم شده تدریس ما را فعالیت ما را باید ادامه بتیم و انگیزه بتیم برای شاگردای ما که خوب خیر اگر این راه را بسته کردن راه های دیگه وجود داره تا ما با فعالیت خود ادامه بتیم همیشه برای زنانی که در داخل افغانستان هستن همی بوده شجاع هستن و شجاع باشن و به خاطر حق خود بجنگن فهم این ما سالهای سال با حکومتهای مردان روبرو بودیم در خانواده ها ما با نظام و سیستم مرد سالاری مواجی بودیم ولی آن چی که میتونه زنان افغانستان موفق بسازه استادگی خودشان رست They use the women as a tools in their political game Right now, uh, and it is not new, but the Taliban chapter is very different. Their policy is full of discrimination against the women. I do not want my sisters back home or I do not want my brothers back home to receive a madras education. That is all that Taliban ideology of like terrorism and all that. So the international community has to make sure that when they are talking about the right to education for girls, for the women of Afghanistan, they have to... talk about that quality of education and what the kids will be learning in schools. ما خودم یعنی میخوایم صدای تمام زنان افغان باشم و تنها خاص خاصشان بر فعلا این هست که در مکاتب در آموزشگاه ها مدارس و دانشگاه ها برای از اینا باز شود تا اینا هم بتونن فعالیت بکنن از جامعه جهانی تنها خاص ما این هست که نه تنها زنای فعال تمام زنای افغان را باید واقعا به دادشون برسن و صدایشان را بشنون What I see in the next 20 uh, years is the fact that, yes, we will have bumps. Yes, the, a lot of things, bad things will happen. But I do see Afghan women, the next generation, taking the lead, rising up and making sure that their country doesn't go back to the way it was in the 80s, 90s, or even in the 2023s, you know. So I think for me, the... Optimism continues. I do believe that the young girls of Afghanistan believe in their education and we will be a society that will be remembered for our rebelliousness. But at the same time, the Afghanistan is a country that goes through political hiccups, um, but still tries. So, yeah. I ask Professor Randeria, President and Rector, to deliver the laudatio for this year's Open Society Prize recipients. It's indeed an honor and a pleasure to present on behalf of the CEU this year's Open Society Prize to Afghan women and girls, represented here by a small group of six Afghan women whose remarkable achievements we honor today. I would like to thank the Open Society Foundations, especially Lenny Bernardo, and our Afghan student community for helping us to select these prize winners. Unfortunately, not all of them could make it here to Vienna for our ceremony, so I would like to warmly welcome three of the prize winners who are with us today, Zeba Mirzai, Sumia... Sumia Tora, and 
हैं पछताना दुरानी and i'd like to thank on this occasion also the austrian foreign ministry for facilitating their travel to vienna joining us online at aidin sahiba yakubi munisa mubaris and tamana paryani who are unable to cross borders despite all our best efforts but i hope we can host all three of you another time as zeba recently reminded me Mahatma Gandhi once said and I quote if you educate a man you educate an individual but if you educate a woman you educate an entire family and perhaps no one can appreciate the force of this remark better than afghan women who have been subjected to deeply ingrained patriarchal domination in their everyday lives they have now been forcibly restricted by the taliban regime to a narrowly circumscribed domestic sphere once again and denied access to education the women of afghanistan have thus again once have thus once again had to learn if i may quote tamana that they must start protesting from their homes and they must compel their families to listen to their voices it's by cultivating this spirit of self empowerment and resistance to injustice that education can have truly radical impact and this is precisely why the right to education for women has come under such fierce and sustained attack by those who fear women's emancipation and seek to condemn them to eternal silence with indomitable courage our afghan sisters have chosen to pierce this wall of silence and we can only hope that we at the ceu and the osf can help to amplify their voices your voices today these outstanding women have championed education for they understand that knowledge is the key to unlocking the doors that have once again been closed to half of their country's population they've established schools they've created learning opportunities and they've ensured that no woman is left behind in the pursuit of her dreams her rights and her aspirations by nurturing the minds of the next generation they have paved the way for a brighter future but of on women and children and girls especially will hopefully before long be able to shape their own destinies and enjoy full equality it's essential to recognize the immense personal sacrifices made by these extraordinary women whose efforts we honor today they faced not only threats and intimidation and even endured unimaginable physical torture by daring to challenge the forces of tyranny and yet they remained steadfast refusing to be silenced knowing that the struggle for equality requires unwavering dedication resolve and moral fortitude they you are beacons of courage and resilience inspiring countless others to join your cause and strive for a more gender just and inclusive society in a world plagued by patriarchy violence against women and gender injustice it's your indomitable spirit and those of afghan women that has broken through the confines of silence and fear as you've stepped forward to voice the concerns and the aspirations of women worldwide you have relentlessly fought against the discrimination of women and worked to dismantle the very foundations of gender inequality your courage shines for all of us as a beacon of hope it's an inspiration to all of us and by awarding its most prestigious prize to afghan women and girls today ceu recognizes their exemplary efforts to champion women's education we honor the transformative impact that their work and your work has had on your communities and your society may it continue to inspire struggles for societal change both at home and abroad and may your vision of a gender just open society become a reality for women and for girls all over the world so thank you very very much for the work that you have done on all our behalf
Today, I stand before you with a profound sense of admiration and solidarity as we gather to recognize the immense challenges faced by Afghan women and girls and to celebrate their resilience, courage, and determination. In this defining moment, we cannot ignore the plight of women and girls of Afghanistan who have endured the impacts of conflict, violence, and systemic oppression. The obstacles they confront are formidable, yet their resilience remains unyielding. They persist in their pursuit of basic rights, such as access to education, healthcare, economic opportunities, and they strive for a society that respects their voices and acknowledges their invaluable contributions. It is an honor to receive this prize on behalf of women and girls of Afghanistan. I extend my deepest appreciation to those who have organized this gathering and to the individuals and institutions who have steadfastly advocated for the rights of women and girls in Afghanistan. Let this moment serve as a call to action to stand in solidarity with Afghan women and girls. Their struggle is inseparable from our own, and their triumphs exemplify all of our human spirit. We must unwaveringly commit ourselves to ensure that they prevail. This prize serves as a powerful message to the world. It is a testament to the resilience determination, and unwavering spirit of Afghan women and girls. This prize resounds with the collective voice of those who stand with us, declaring that we, women and girls of Afghanistan, will prevail with justice. Thank you. Today, I, as I walk to this stage, I'm filled with hope. This gathering is not only a testament to the Afghan girls, but also the resounding call for unity, collaboration, and tackling the critical issues that confront Afghanistan right now. In the presence of so many exceptional individuals who have dedicated their lives to effective positive change, I am reminded of the urgency with which we must address the pressing challenge of ban on girls' education in Afghanistan. The CEU Prize serves as a beacon of hope, guiding us toward a future where we can access human, social, and political rights as a collective. I stand here in front of you to remind you of those who couldn't make it. The countless activists, advocates who work tirelessly in Afghanistan every day. The teachers who still show up to my school. The girls who still show up to learn. Even though they are banned from accessing education beyond grade six by the current regime. I dedicate this remarkable recognition to the teachers, the parents, the girls who still show up and believe in a better and inclusive Afghanistan. I extend my deepest gratitude to the CEU Prize Committee for this incredible honor. Your recognition not only affirms the importance of girls' education that we champion, but also emboldens us to persist in our mission. Let us therefore harness the movement to inspire others, to spark conversations, and to ignite transformative changes in our communities, our nations, and the world. Thank you. Thank you very much and congratulations to our prize winners. This afternoon, <laughs> this afternoon you're invited to the opening of the exhibition Dark Sons by Mariam Haidari. Born in Afghanistan but now working in Austria, her captivating artwork serves as a testament to her unwavering pursuit of freedom, equality and justice for Afghan women. You're invited to explore her remarkable paintings at the CEU cafeteria. Before the very final stage of our um, ceremony this afternoon, I'd like, you to, I'd like to ask you to listen to one short piece of Afghan music from our musicians.
بوشید چون جون می روی بوشید چون جون می روی اندر میان جان من اندر میان جان من سر و خرامان منی سر و خرامان منی ای رونق بستان من ای رونق بستان من چشم من بیرون مشو ای شوله تاوان من ای شوله تاوان من بوشید چون جان می روی بوشید چون جان می روی اندر میان جان من اندر میان جان من سر و خرامان منی سر و خرامان منی ای رونق بستان من ای رونق بستان من Oh, no. 
Thank you very much again. And now we move finally to that special moment in our graduates' lives. Members of the class of 2023, please rise. As you know, one small ceremonial step remains, so in a moment, but not yet, I will ask you to remove move the tassel on your cap from the right side to the left side, not yet. Slowly. This symbolic gesture formally identifies you as a university graduate. After that, I will count to three very slowly so you can throw your cap in the air together and we can have a photo opportunity. Are you ready? Now. Now move your tassel to the left. And now I will count to three so you can throw your cap. One, two, three, now. Distinguished guests, colleagues, families and friends, join me in applauding the new members of the Central European University Class of 2023. Our ceremony has come to an end and we are ready for our recessional procession. Please rise and remain standing until the procession is completed. Thank you very much and goodbye. Thank you.